Hi everyone, welcome to this week's uh, episode on uh, robotics and let's get started. So today we're going to be learning how to do um, some spiral shapes. Our goal is to create a counter that keeps track of the number of times our um, drawing loops are repeating and then changing behavior based on that loops. Today's behavior we're going to change is we're going to change the color of the shapes as it goes along. So let's get going. Open up a web browser and go to vr.vex.com and then open up your playground and let's get started. Uh, so looping in computer programming is incredibly important. It's how a computer can easily do repetitive tasks without having to build multiple um, sections of the exact same code. Uh, also keeping track of the number of times that the program has looped through a particular loop is also a really important skill to learn. Today we're going to be focused on that skill. You have to forgive me, my computer's running really slow today. So, but we'll survive it. Um, and today we're going to be using the art canvas. So I'm going to kick over to the art canvas on the playground and expand my window so I can see a little bit, we can see a little better than that. All right, so the idea today is we're going to create a spiraling object. So we're going to start right where the center of the canvas and we're going to draw a shape. It can be any polygon you'd like. We're going to draw triangles today. So anything but triangles when you submit your work, please. Um, when you get up to like four or five, or five, six, seven sided objects, you really start getting some interesting spirals coming out of it. So that's what I would recommend for you. Um, so let's get started. So I like to turn the velocity up right away because I want this little robot to move as fast as possible. So I'm just going to set 1000% won't help. I'm going to set the drive and turn velocity to 100% right off the bat. Um, that way we can get going. And the first thing to do is we're just going to draw a shape. So we're going to draw a triangle together. So let's come down here and grab um, a loop. We know we're going to need to repeat. In fact, the number of times we have to repeat is going to be three times. We're going to draw three sides. And just to make life easy, I'm just going to start my triangle going up in this direction. We're going to draw a bunch of them around in a circle, so which way you start doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to start in the easiest way, which is straight up. Um, so I'm going to have it drive forward. And to keep track of where I am and what I'm doing, I'm just going to drop the pen down. I can also give it a color and we can do all that later. Let's just worry about right now getting it marking and then worry about color later. Um, now, once I drive forward some distance, I'm gonna make this a large number because I have a lot of room to work with. Um, I think from the center to the top is about 900. Center to bottom is 900. So I put mine at 700, we'll see how that looks. And then now we need to do the turn. So to do a triangle, whatever side I'm, whatever, um, sided polygon I'm using, all I have to do is take the number of sides in the shape and that divides into 360. So 360 degrees is one full turn around. So you wanna go one full turn for a triangle, you wanna do it in three turns. You've gotta do 360 divided by three um, to get there. So let's do that. Let's say we're gonna to need to turn right. I can make this right or left. In fact, let's just switch and make it left. Who cares? And this, I can do that math. So I know I want three turns. So I can do 360 degrees, one full turn, divided by three to find each of the turns I need. Or I can just do math with the program. Like there's no reason to do that because if I make a mistake, that's problematic. So here I can just drop in this divided by block. And I can just put the math right here, 360, and then divided by three. Okay, so that gives me 365 by three is 120, so 120 degree turn. Let's just try this out and see what happens. It's going to repeat three times. We've got no problems with this. So we're drawing, boom, it's turning. Okay, good. Turning, and I get a side facing triangle. Awesome. So now my goal is to create a bunch of those, all starting at this same point, except I want them to be offset a little bit from each one. So every time I want it to be a few degrees, like instead of starting straight up, I want it to start out at an angle this way a little bit. Um, so my next step then is to create another repeat loop because I normally need to repeat this. So I'm gonna grab a repeat loop. 
I don't want a forever loop because I do want to control how many times it goes around and does that. Um, so when it's here, now I want the heading to be off a little bit. Um, so I can get that in a couple different ways. What's well, the easiest way? Yeah, let's try. Let's try just a quick turn right and see if we can make that work. So we can do a turn right, and let's make it some small number of degrees. Now this is going to have to go. Um, all the way around in a circle, like offsetting a little bit each time. So what we want to make sure we're doing is having this degrees that's offset by be a number that divides into 360. Um, so 36 will divide into 360. So let's try that to start with. So 36 degrees, um, that will go 10 triangles, right? So 36 degrees each time is 10 triangles. And then it'll repeat. Let's try that real quick. See if we got something going on. So we got our first triangle going. Awesome. And at the end, it turns 36 degrees and draws a second triangle back on top of itself. Awesome. So at, at, that's actually given us a pretty interesting looking shape to start off with right away. That was kind of cool. Um, so next thing we want to do is we want to get our robot to move up and out of the way because we don't want it to be sitting in the middle of our thing. Although it does kind of look, look like a spider in the middle of a web. Maybe that's cool. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually pull the pin up, move robot pin up. I'm going to put this down below the, the thing because I want it to happen after everything else has happened. Um, and then we're going to move it. So let's turn to a heading first, just in case we're, we're in some weird, um, we're pointing in some weird direction. Let's just tell it to turn to a heading of zero, which is north, right? So remember headings are not how far you're turning, but it's the direction you turn to. So we want to turn to north. And then we're going to drive forward. And like I said, it's about 900 to the wall. Um, and then we're going to turn to another heading. Um, and this time we're going to turn to the west. I'm going to drive the robot up here and over here into the corner. So and west is 270 degrees. And then we're going to drive forward for another 900. And that will get our robot out of the way. At the end, it'll take the pull the pin up and just drive the robot off the off the drawing. Um, all right, so so far so good. But what if we wanted to add some color to this? And what we wanted to do is we wanted to have it oscillate between say red and green. So we would need to figure out a way to do that. Now using our loops here, if we change the color to red, let's say we put a set robot pin color to red here every time it loops around it's going to change it to red there's no way to then change the next triangle to green if we do that so this is a bad place to put it so let's get rid of this block what if then we put the robot pin color outside of that triangle now it would repeat three times it would come down here and it would change it to red and it would draw and then it would come back up here and it would go through and make a red one and then come down here and change it to red again which is already red and make another red one so then it wouldn't be like kind of bouncing back and forth well one thing we could do is we could create um, multiples of these and have them run after each other but that's what we're trying to avoid we're trying to avoid having to copy and paste and make a whole bunch of huge amount of code for a very simple task so the way we do this in, in uh, computer programming is we create what's called a counter. So it's just a variable that's going to keep track of the number of times we've gone through a loop. And then it's going to allow us to control things based on the number of times through the loop. So the first time through the loop, we'll say, hey, make that red. Second time through the loop, make that green. And then we can reset the counter back to one and then say, oh, so the first time, red. Second time, green. Reset it back to one red green red green so that's our goal right now so we're going to make a new variable let's call it counter or something else that makes sense to you is fine 
Um, and we're going to start that counter. We're going to set the counter to the start starting value to one. Zero for us isn't that helpful. We You can do like zero and one, but it's probably a little easier to think about one and two times three instead of zero times three, one times two. It's more descriptive in my mind. Um, and then what we're going to do is at the end of this loop, so once we leave, so we're going we're gonna to be counting up not the number of sides it's drawing. We're going to be counting up the number of triangles or shapes it draws. So here's a key thing to do. We've got to put that um, change counter we're going to put it outside of the triangle loop. Let's let's put some comments in real quick, actually. So let's call this the polygon loop. Remember, a polygon is just a um, regular side. Well, let's just let's be more descriptive. Let's say it draws a polygon. So this is our polygon drawing loop. If we change the number of repeats and the angle, we change these threes to say fives, it'll draw a pentagon. If we change the 10, it'll, call, it'll, it'll draw a decagon. So just whatever we change those two. We'll also have to adjust our size of our um, sides if we change the number of sides we're doing, but you'll figure that out when you do that. Um, so now this draws a polygon and then this, let's say, I don't know, it offsets the robots for the next shape. Okay. And this is where the counter comes in. So after it draws a triangle, it's going to repeat three times. It comes down here, it offsets a little bit, and then it increases the counter by one. So when it comes back up in loops, the counter variable is going to say, hey, we're on loop number two. We're on drawing number two, okay? And that's where we need to start coming in with our controls. So we've made a counter that keeps track of the number of loops we are. Now we need to tell the robot what to do when the counter is at certain numbers. And for that, we need an if-then statement. So up here, we're gonna grab an if-then, and we're gonna drop that if-then before we draw the triangle. Because we wanna set, well, that's gonna be tricky to do. We'll build it out here, then we'll drop it in once it's built a little bit. We're going to drop this right in here before we draw the triangle. And we're going to say if the counter is equal to, and this is one of the times when we can use an equal to block because we know the counter is going to be either 1, 2, or 3. It's never going to be 1.004, something weird like that. So we're going to say that, and we're going to say whenever the counter variable is equal to one, we want to set the pin color to red. So I'm actually going to delete this from down here because we don't need this block anymore. Let me duplicate it first. Oh, I didn't want that. Set the pin color to red. And then I'm going to just get de this, uh, delete this block here because we don't need to set the color red there anymore. Um, and then we're going to take this, and we need one for what happens when it's two. So, okay, control C, control V, and now we say, so if the counter is equal to two, we're going to do something different. We're going to change it to green. Now, I could add a three here and put a three down here and a four, and I can go from green to black to whatever I want, right? Okay, so now I need to pop this right up here before I draw the triangle. So, and I'm gonna do this, and let's put a comment up here and just say, this alternates, if I can spell, <laughs> hang on, alternates the pen color for, well, let's just say alternates the pen color because we can change how many times it alternates and stuff. So let's not be too descriptive there. So this set, of, this set of code alternates the pin color on counter one and two. Let's see what happens. So we'll reset and let's draw. So awesome, we've got a red one to start with, which is what we wanted. And the second one hopefully will now be green. Oh, that's awesome. It is green, it looks amazing. And now the next one should be red again. We want to go back and forth, but it's not. 
So because neither of these, like when it went through the third time, oops, when it went through the third time and it went up through and evaluated this, the counter wasn't equal to two or equal to, or equal to one or two. So it didn't change the pin color, just left it green like it was last time. So what we need to do now is, is learn how to, to do this little bitty trick, which is to reset the counter after it gets to two. So it always just goes from one, two, and then starts over. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay. The way to do that is another if then statement. Now where that if then statement go is really important. We want it to, on the first pass through, we set the counter to one up here. We want it to change the pin to red right away. Draw one triangle red. The counter goes up by one to two. It comes up here and it changes it because the counter is equal to two to green. Draws a triangle. After it draws a triangle, we now want to reset that counter back to one. So down here, if we notice, we're going to put an if then statement. We'll build it on the side first and then put it in right where we need it to be. But we need it to be right down here in one of these in this section here. Um, because we want it to change the counter. In fact, we're going to want to put it after this change counter number. Because once it gets down to here, it's still stuck at 2 after drawing the second triangle. And this is where it turns to 3. And once it turns to 3, we want to say, okay, now set it back to 1. So let's go back to here and say, if the counter is, this time let's use a greater than block. So if the counter variable is greater than now what do we what's the problematic number and that's of course the number three so if it's greater than two sorry if it's greater than two after it changes here we're going to say set the variable back to not zero but one so set the counter variable back to one and that has to go below the change okay so now on its first pass through, we set the, the, the counter variable to one. On its first pass through, that number one uh, changes the color to red. It draws a, a shape. It leaves that shape. It increases the counter up to two, saying, okay, now we're on triangle two. This is not greater than two yet, so it skips this part, goes back up, and when it gets here, it says counter is equal to two. It changes now to green. It draws a green one. It leaves the green and sets up for the next one and then it changes it up to number three. So the counter says, okay, we're on the third pass now. But because the three is greater than two, it executes this code, resetting the counter back to one. It comes up here and it says, oh, okay, so counter is one, we go red. Great. It comes here, draws a red triangle. Comes down here, adds one to it to two. Goes back through, draws green. So you can see how we've just been really sneaky with adding a few if then statements to be able to count up a certain numbers, control some aspect of the robot based on that count number, and then reset that count number whenever we want to so that we can keep repeating that. Let's see how that works now. If everything is perfect, we should be able to see a green triangle followed by, or sorry, a red triangle followed by green, followed by red, by green, by red, by green. Awesome. So you can see a lot of things happen there. So we got the red green overlap we wanted. We also noticed that our robot took off and got out of the way at the end. So that's kind of cool. Um, and now we just want to think about what things we can do with this. So what if I wanted to add another color to it? I could easily just grab one of these, copy and paste it. Whoops, that copy and pasted a lot of stuff. Throw away all that extra nuts I didn't want. And I could just set the, this one to three. And I would say, okay, then I want to add blue to it. So I want to have a three color mix in there. I drop that in. And now I'm just going to say whenever the counter is above, it's greater than three. Because that's my last useful number that I'm using. Um, I end up with that. So that's great. Well, what if I didn't want to have it alternating every time? What if I wanted a whole bunch of red ones in a row? And then the green ones at the end on one side or the other. So what I could do is I could let this counter go up to however many I'm going to draw. So here I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five. There's 10 of them all together here. So maybe I could set this red. I could say, okay, red is going to be, watch how confusing this is. I want red to be the first five 
and then green to be the last five. Let me snap that back in. Let me see if I can delete this. Yeah, I think I did what I wanted to do. Let me make sure. Yep, that was good. So I'll delete those. Um, and now let's say we want red to be the first five and green to be the last five. So here's how we would do that. We want red to be activated whenever the counter is between one and five. So we need just that. We need an and block. And you've probably done this in math class a million times. What we're going to do is do, um, you know, you can say that X is greater than or equal to, and then you graph it and shade in one side or shade in another side. Um, so we're going to do something like that. So we're going to say whenever the counter is greater than zero, meaning one and above. So we're going to say greater than, oops, I just threw the other one away. Let's get that and back in there. And greater than, to be careful, make sure we're just getting, yeah, that one little right in there. Um, so we're going to say whenever the counter is greater than zero, right, which means one or above, but we want it to end at five. So we want it to be greater than zero, but less than, and not five, because less than five would be four. We want it to be less than six because we want five to still make it red um, and again we want to put the counter in there we're still triggering our stuff off the base of what the counter is so if the counter is greater than zero which means one or above and less than six which means five and below so one and above five and below one to five it's going to be red and the same thing we're going to do over here and i'm just going to grab this and paste it and we're going to say when the counter is uh, greater than, and here's a little weird, we're gonna say greater than five, because this should be six through 10. And greater than five is how we say six. So when it's greater than five and less than 11, because we want 10 to still trigger it, right? And here, the last useful number we have is 11. When we hit 11, we wanna make sure that we're then going back and changing it back down to one. All right. Although in this case, it won't really matter because it won't repeat after 10 anyway, so we don't really actually need that. Uh, but it's good to keep it in there in case we increase a number. Okay, so let's try this out and see how that works. All right, that's terrific. We got half red and half green on one side, so that's a way to play with some stuff. Now, what if you're like, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to use all four colors, but randomly. Um, so that's an easy way to do random stuff. So to do that, if I wanted to do all four colors, I'd pull this out, right? So all this range nonsense out, and I would put an equals back in, and I would say, hey, if the counter is equal to one, and then I'm actually gonna delete this block here because it's so messed up, it's gonna be hard to mess with. And I'm just gonna say Control C, Control V, and, oh, and I'm gonna get rid of all this extra repeat stuff. So I've just got this one if loop, and I'm just gonna copy it a few more times. I'm gonna say here, this is two, and this one back here is three, and this one back here is four. Let me snap them onto each other. Boom, boom, boom. So two, three, and four, these are the three different, the four different colors that are possible. So green, blue, and black. Now, I don't want these to come in a specific order every time. I want them to be random. So the way to achieve that is down here, I'm gonna get rid of the change counter block. And I don't need to, and I'm gonna change that into a random number. So I'm gonna grab this set counter down here, and I'm gonna say set it to a pick random. And instead of one to 10, I'm gonna say one, two, four. And it's gonna choose either a one, two, three, or four every time. 
and that should randomize it, which means it's not actually a counter anymore. It's just some weird selection thing. So I don't need to increase it. Um, I can just delete this four block. So I don't also, I wouldn't need to reset it every few times either. So if I do this, let's see what I get. <laughs> okay, that's something a little different. So we've gone through now three or four different ways to change the colors and play with some ideas. Feel free to modify those and, and do it the way you'd like to do it. Um, and oh, and then let's go, let's do one more thing. Let's just try one here with, I don't know, let's up this to seven. And that means this has to change to seven. And you know what? You might be saying, Mr. Haza, that makes no sense. Well, I keep changing both these numbers when they, they have to be the same all the time. A safer way to do it is just to make a variable called sides. So let's do that. Just grab sides. We'll throw in sides here because that's the number of sides that we want to have. We throw in sides here. So now they're both definitely going to be the same whenever. And then down here, we just... Uh, Let's do a set variable command, throw it up at the top. So we set the, not counter, but number of sides. And if we set it to three, we've got what we have on the screen. If we set it to, uh, I don't know, seven, we can do that as well. And then we can say, you know what? Maybe we want to do more than 10 each time, right? And remember that each offset we do at 36 degrees, this 36 degrees made that 10 times because we need to do it 10 times around. So really what this is, is this number 10 is 360 degrees divided by the offset here. So let's do that. Let's throw some math in there. So we can do a divided by here. So one tur full turn is 360 degrees all the way around in a circle. If we do 36 degrees each time, so 36, 36, 36, we need to do that 10 times all the way around. So 360 divided by um, this number of degrees. So here we can just say, all right, so it's 360 divided by um, here. So let's give that a variable because again we have a situation where we have two numbers that have to be exactly the same all the time so if i change one of these and i forget to change this one i break it so let's just do i don't know offset turn that's what i'm going to call it, turb i'm going to call mine offset turn because it kind of offsets the robot for the next next uh, shape so submit and i'm going to grab offset turn i'm going to put it right there and I'm going to grab offset turn and put it right there. That keeps those two linked. So doing mathematics in this way, like this, and setting these variables to be the same thing really makes your code much harder to break. So I'm going to set the offset now. And I'm going to do it at the top so I can easily make these changes later. So set my offset turn. Now if I type in 36 degrees, that's going to make this turn 36 degrees just like it was. It's going to put 36 degree, 36 in here, and 360 divided by 36 is 10. But what if we did something smaller, like, I don't know, 9 degrees, and we ran this code. Now, 9 goes here, and 9 does divide into 360 evenly, so that's nice. And then 9 degrees goes here. So let's run it and see what happens. Oh, broken already. So uh, you can see that when we talked about, when I talked about earlier, this side is way too big for a large shape. So it's got to be a smaller for a smaller shape. Um, so in fact, let's make it affected by the sides. So the bigger the sides get, the smaller each side needs to be. So the shorter that is enough to be. So one way we can do that is just by doing a divided by block. And so as sides gets bigger, we need the number to get smaller. So we're going to put the sides on the bottom. And then maybe like, I don't know, let's try the 700 here. So now this size is set to what? Seven. So it's going to be that 700 side divided by seven, which will give us only a 100. 
And so then if we had the sides go up to number t like 10 sides, it would be only 70 on each side. So as the shape gets more sides, the, the length of each side gets smaller if we use an equation like this. It may work, it may not work. Let's take a look. Okay, so some things I noticed with that. We drew a really small shape. So here's what I what I realized is I and when we first thought about this, for a triangle, 700 work well. When we added this equation, we would want that triangle to create a 700 degree side. And so if we put a three in for sides, we get 700 divided by three, which wouldn't give us the 700 we wanted. So really this should be like 2,100. That way when we put three in, 2,100 divided by three is 700. That gives us more like what we started with with the triangle and hopefully might fix this kind of small thing. It looks a little bit cool, but it's a little like dumb looking too. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of the randomness. If you want to use it, feel free. Um, I'll, I'll do one more drawing at this higher side. And then maybe the nine degree offset is really too small of an offset, but let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that looks way cooler now that uh, it's a little bit bigger. Um, so adjust the size, the number of uh, the sides that you have, the length of each side, the number of offset or the, the size of the offset you have, play around with those things, create something interesting. Um, and yeah, when you're done, submit your work to Teams, have fun with it. Um, try to modify everything that we've done in here and play around with some stuff. Um, especially these the counters make sure you're understanding how the counter works and how to reset the counter if you need to I know right now we don't need to because it's random um, but I hope you enjoyed that I hope you can create something kind of fun and interesting for me to take a look at and have a great time